What's going on you gamers? Today we're going to be jumping into some more Lies of P and this time I'll be showing you the location of and just how good the weapons are in Chapter 3. So if you want to grab all four of them, then stay tuned. That's coming up next. Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be jumping into some Lies of P. The game has now officially released and personally, I think this is one of the much better Souls-like games that I've played for quite some time. There's a rich environment, there's a lot to do in it, and some of the best things is that you're able to combine your weapons, so being able to grab quite a few of them is going to help you out massively. Whether it be the absolutely awesome Salamander Dagger that is perfect for your technique types, very fast, does a lot of damage over time, and great for anyone that likes rogue builds, or the nicely balanced Fire Axe with its very well-rounded setup, also, not forgetting the Booster Glaive, one of the coolest looking weapons with amazing damage and great Fable Arts. And finally, if we're on the topic of damage, definitely not one for your stealthy types. The Big Pipe Wrench is clunky, heavy, but has the potential to be one of the hardest hitting weapons in the game. Right, so kicking it off, like I said, these all take place in Act 3 or Chapter 3, and the first one you're going to want to go to is to teleport to the workshop union entrance. Once you're at this stargazer, you're going to see some stairs directly next to it. You're going to want to pop all the way up them, go into the room on your left, and just behind these boxes here is going to be an entrance that's already opened. You're going to jump down, beware there are a few enemies but nothing too tricky, so tackle those, and then you'll be able to pick up a reward nice and easy from the safe that's just in the corner. Then you're going to rip it off its hinges, and you'll be able to grab yourself the Salamander Dagger Blade and the Salamander Dagger Handle. This, like I said earlier, is an absolute beast. It is amazingly good in a lot of rogue builds, or rogue type builds should I say. Very fast, the technique's high, the damage over time effect is absolutely amazing, and it's probably one of the best daggers for builds in the game. On to our second weapon, and this time you're going to want to fast travel to the Stargazer, the Workshop Union Culvert. Straight in front of you should be a ladder that you'll be able to make your way all the way to the top. And then once there, just run through, chuck a right, and make it all the way to the end. And you're probably going to see an absolutely hulking monstrosity. Probably best not to take that on at the moment. You may well be able to tackle it, it's up to you but later on you'll be able to drain the chemicals that are on the floor and he'll be a whole bunch easier to tackle. So it's up to you whether you want to do it now, I would personally try later. Activate the lever that's there, I'd already done it, and then you're going to drop down the ladder. Do better than me and make sure you don't go in at the wrong time and get smashed in the face by his special move, but ultimately you're just going to be making your way all the way to the end to grab this container just here. And this one's going to give you the Booster Glaive Blade and the Booster Glaive Handle. Personally, I think this is one of the best looking weapons in the game. It has some great Fable Arts, it does some nice damage, and it's also got some pretty decent range. So if you're after one of the coolest looking weapons, this may well be one you're after. So jumping over to the third weapon, you're going to be at the exact same Stargazer, so the Workshop Colvair, and this time you're going to go just up this way, and you're going to want to be mindful of the Burning Ball of Doom that is making its way towards you over and over again. There's some crevices either side, so dip into them whenever you can, and watch out for the enemies on the way. Some of them are a complete pain, like the ones in these doorways, but most times you should be able to tackle them, take them down, or avoid them if you want to. As you can see, that ball does do some damage. I would love to say that was to show that, but it really wasn't. But as long as you've got a high bit of health, you shouldn't have to worry too much. It definitely won't one-shot you. But once you've proceeded all the way to the end, take out the enemy to stare, and then you'll be able to open another chest, and this one's going to have the Fire Axe in it. Fire Axe Blade and Fire Axe Handle. 
This one I found to be quite a well-rounded weapon. It actually does a nice bit of damage. It's not as strong as some of the others I've come across, but boasts quite a bit of build flexibility with both its scaling coming in at C for its technique and motivity. Also has a well-rounded skill set because it's Fable Arts, one of them is defensive type and one of them is an attacking type. So that works out perfect if you're after a balanced type of build. The last weapon unfortunately does take a little bit more work because you're going to have to have beaten the boss of this area and then you're going to want to teleport to the centre of the Vanigi works. From here head straight forward in the direction I show you, through the smaller door and then you're just going to want to make your way all the way down the ladder. Now there is a bit of a distance to go for this one but it's not too hard to get to and personally like I said this is one that I think a lot of strength types will absolutely adore. So just keep making your way through the instance, tackle the enemies if you want to, if you don't you should be able to run past all of them at this point, because getting to this weapon is a little bit of a trick. But just keep making your way through, avoid all the enemies and of course the exploding containers whenever you can, and just keep making your way through until you see this area just here. It's in a straight line so you can't really miss it, then you're going to make your way just over here. And run across this bridge. That bit can be a nightmare if they manage to hit that at the same time as you. So either block or try to avoid the bomb. Now at this stage I must admit it was about 5 in the morning and I had lost all focus and mainly just got hit in the face by everything so apologies for the gameplay but the container you're after is just here and this chest is going to reward you with an absolutely amazing item. That's the big pipe wrench weapon, big pipe wrench head and big pipe wrench handle. This is just a monstrosity of a weapon, one of if not the heaviest headpieces in the game does some crazy damage, very slow, very cumbersome, but in the right setups this could probably dish out one of the highest single hit damage you'll probably be able to pull off in the whole game. Far from graceful, but you will definitely pack a punch. Even the light attacks do a fair bit of damage, but this Fable Art right here is going to be the main reason you're after this weapon. If you're able to charge this attack up all the way, it is going to do some crazy damage and I think personally you may even be able to make this at max level once you've boosted yourself up, very possibly one shot some of the toughest enemies and bosses in the game. Hopefully that's helped you guys and girls out, there'll be a lot more Liza P content from me. As always, Wolfins Gaming, take care, I'll see you on the next day.